Hello everyone, it's Karen and it is also Saturday. So today is gonna be super, super fun. Our city, um, Muskegon, Michigan, is putting on this thing they do every single year called City of the Dead. And basically it takes place in our oldest cemetery and you basically walk along um, through the cemetery and along the way there are people in full costume who have essentially um, really studied closely the biography of somebody who lived in Muskegon and was influential in some way and has since passed because they are dead. Um, and I think they also have to be buried in the cemetery um, in order for it to count. But anyway, they kind of are there live, fully like, you know, in actor mode and they tell you about their life and then you walk along and you go find somebody else to listen to and it's just like super fun super creepy but also like super educational to find out about all these people that are influential in your town and one of them that's also there is this abolitionist who had his hand chopped off or something like that so like the stories are really cool but anyway that's what I'm doing later today what I want to talk about now um, are basically the books that I've read recently. And this is the past week I've read four books. So the first one that I read is The Haunting of Maddie Claire. Um, I love Simone St. James, but I've really only discovered her as other people have and have only read basically her most recent stuff except for the newest one. That one I still need to read. This is her very, very first one. And it is so good. So basically this woman um, in like the time between World War One and World War Two, she's working at a temp agency and they call her and they ask her or yeah, they call her. They ask her to meet with this man and it's like kind of a shady situation. Like she realizes like I'm a woman, like this is a weird situation. He has only asked for a woman um for a potential job and so she's like mm, this is not really my jam this is not really what I'm into um but anyway it ends up being that he is basically a ghost haunter and he writes books about various hauntings and there is a haunting in which um the ghost seems to be aggravated and kind of elevated when um a man comes like it's like a trigger for her and so he wants a woman to kind of train and do all the stuff that he normally does but just he needs a woman so that the ghost doesn't like amp up um and so i use this as the training prompt for the goth to tober readathon that i'm doing yeah i think that's all i'll say is that she goes to this um farm situation and she is trying to like record um pictures of a ghost and also record the ghost's voice um there's a lot of like feminism sort of stuff in here and there's also um a lot about consent and those sort of things so like even though this is obviously a genre book there is a lot more to it um the other thing i will say is that um Simone St. James wanted to start out as like a romance writer and so this book was steamy in parts and I loved it. Um, one of the parts was real weird um, but steamy later I guess. Anyway um, I would highly recommend this book. The next book I read was a bit of a letdown. Um, I read The Haunted Hotel and I think I marked this one for Betrayal um, for the Gothtober readathon that I'm doing. Um, and that is hosted by Olivia Savannah and some of her friends who I don't know as well, but I will link them below. Um, anyway, this was about a haunted hotel, but they didn't actually get to the haunted hotel until way later in the story. Um, it started out very atmospheric and I was very into... Um, kind of the way it started which is basically that this woman wanted to speak to this doctor and he needed to go and go to patients homes and see them and so he was like dude like you need to set up an appointment and she was just adamant that she needed to meet with him and she basically like asked him like am I going mad or what like what is going on with my life and like I just loved the way it started and then I was just like okay but like 
where is this going and when is it going to get there? And it's very short. Um, this book is two stories in here. And the first one um, only goes to page 224. So it's super short, but I just felt like, why is it taking so long to get to where it needs to go? Um, so anyway, I love these vintage books. And also, uh, speaking of that, I don't know if these, are, oh yes, these are the British ones, which might be why I like them because the British covers are always better, but I do have an affiliate link for a book depository now, so I will link it below. It's basically like a way for me to save money because if I use my affiliate link and buy all the books that I normally buy, then I can get money back. But if you guys want to use it too, I would super appreciate it. Basically, it is a way to get free international shipping anywhere, I think. And um, it has all the cute UK covers because it is a UK-based bookstore. It's also a brick-and-mortar bookstore in the UK. I don't know like if it's a chain, how many cities it's in. I think it is a chain. Um, but it's basically like a really good alternative to Book Depository because... Did I say book depository link before? Blackwell's is the name of the bookstore I was just referring to. I don't know what I said. Anyway, then I read this adorable children's book called Piggy Pie, and I will put a picture somewhere. Um, basically, it is just the cutest book. Um, I was at a reading training, and somebody basically said that this is her favorite children's book, and it is like her go-to baby shower gift because... She just loves it so much. And one of the things she said about it, which I love in a children's book, is where like there is child content that children will enjoy, but there's also like this added layer for the adults to appreciate as they're reading it to a child. And so I requested it from the library and like absolutely 100%, like so, so, so true. Um, basically, it's about a witch. I think she's called like a glitch or something like that. Not a witch, but anyway, she's basically a witch and she's trying to make piggy pie. Um, and the only ingredient that she's miss missing, um, are the piggies. And so she's going around trying to find like, Hey, can you help me find piggies? No one can help her. Um, so anyway, she apparently stumbles upon a wolf <laughs> who is just looking a bit of a hot mess. Like he has not eaten in a long time. He is disheveled. Turns out he's the wolf from the story of the three little pigs. And so they're both kind of looking for pigs together. So they kind of team up. And um, then at the end, sorry for a spoiler, but it like it is a children's book. Uh, they decide, you know what? Like we're both hungry this is taking too long. Let's just go to dinner. So they like, I don't know if they walk hand in hand. I can't remember, but they're basically just like best friends for life now walking down the street, going to dinner together. And as they're like walking, there's a little thought bubble above each of them. And the wolf like basically has this sandwich in his thought bubble with the smashed witch in the middle. And then the witch also has a thought bubble with like an image of what she wants and I think it's like wolf stew or I don't remember but I was like this is hilarious I loved it so much definitely a book to look out for if you have littles I think it might be out of print I just ordered a used copy because I had to have it in my life and um yeah we'll see when it comes but anyway and then finally I read The Sleeping Car Porter which is on the short list for the Giller Prize um when I found out it was on the long list I just thought this seemed like the coolest cover, like the cover drew me in. Um, it is by Suzette Mayer. Um, and so because it's on the shortlist for the Giller Prize, obviously this is a Canadian book, Canadian author, blah, blah, blah. Um, it is different than I thought because the cover and a little bit of the blurb on the back kind of makes it sound like it's slightly... Um, I don't know, slightly Halloween-ish to me. Um, it says, I think it's just more, it's talking about um, sleep deprivation, hallucinations, and just kind of the atmospheric way that the, the blurb is written just kind of made me think there might be more to this slightly Halloween-ish 
autumnal fall sort of stuff. And I wouldn't say that's the case. Like it definitely is so atmospheric. Anyway, let me tell you what it's about. So this guy is a black man living in Canada and he is a sleeping car porter. So he works on trains um, where people are traveling long distances all the way across Canada and um, they sleep on the train. There are like cars where they can sleep. That's still a true story that there are cars like that. I still want to take a trip from Chicago to Portland, but that's another story for another day. Anyway, he is basically in charge of like taking care of these customers. And this is before there were any unions in the um, railroad industry sort of thing. And also he's black. So he gets treated like shit <laughs> every single day. Um, he also doesn't really have limits on his time. So there are, his only break really is when he will take the cars that he is responsible for and then he will tie the bells somehow, connect the bells to the other guy's cars and he will take a brief break to take a little nap or something like that. But basically he's getting like three hours of sleep a night at most and he's just like taking care of all these people and all their ridiculous requests and basically pretending he doesn't see certain things because there's crazy stuff that happens on a train where people are just there for a week or more on end and um yeah it's just um a really cool historical fiction about the actual lives of people that had this position and um yeah you can look up youtube videos to find out more about the actual like history behind this but it's super like historical fiction and based in fact and all that stuff but I will say that like even though it wasn't really like an autonomous autonomous that I can't say that word it wasn't a fall book but it did definitely have atmosphere and like you were there with him and then there were like questions of like he's not sleeping at all like what do you believe is he a reliable narrator um, and then also I listened to a train ASMR room while I was reading this and it was just the absolute perfect experience. So I would highly recommend this. I would say this one you might take a pass on. I heard his other books are good. I just wasn't a fan of this one. But these two, high, high, high recommend. Oh, and also I forgot to say um, the sleeping car porter, he's also gay and so he has to kind of um navigate that situation because it's not like super safe for him to be out about that so that adds another layer as well anyway I'm gonna enjoy my Saturday I hope you guys are having an amazing day too videos will be a bit sparse I do have one that I'm filming right now um but I have loads of travel coming up so maybe I will do travel vlogs and stuff after I get back from all those adventures. Not really sure, but anyway, I will see you guys later and I hope you have an amazing weekend.